What's up guys, how's it going? It is Matt here. So it's been a while since you've seen my backdrop, been busy. But right now, currently my wife's over in Texas, so I get to stay home and do my videos for you guys right here. So what we're gonna be talking about today is my personal best fish. Now yes, this is a gun channel and I talk a lot about guns, but I love fishing, all right? I absolutely love fishing and I gotta share this story with you guys because it's absolutely the biggest fish I've ever caught when it comes to a bass. Double, biz, double, fit, double digit fish. I gotta talk about it, I gotta tell you the story, and I wanna tell you some tips that I learned from uh, following another channel out there that actually helped me catch bigger bass. So let's get into it. So last Saturday, my daughter, every weekend I take my kids out fishing. On Saturday, I usually take my daughter, and on Sunday, I take my son, or vice versa, or whatever. Or sometimes I'll take my daughter both, because she prefers fishing more than my son, <laughs> go figure. But I, I love taking them out fishing, and I, I teach them how to fish, and I think it's important for parents to be able to <clears throat> take your kids out to actually teach them the stuff that you enjoy, too. You know, fishing's something you can do for the rest of your life. It's just a fun thing to do. If you haven't take your kids out, go take them out to go fishing. You know, they'll love it. But what I want to talk about is my absolute best personal fish that I've ever caught. My best personal fish i ever caught. Now, I don't carry a scale on me or a big old hook thingy in the mouthy that I can hook it up and, you know, do it. And my cameraman is usually my 11-year-old daughter, so the pictures aren't the greatest and my video isn't the greatest either. But originally, I was trying to get her to get video of, of me actually bringing it to the shore, but she kind of got video of her toes and her foot and our fishing poles and uh, two seconds of me pulling it out of the water and then it going away. So, yes, I don't have the actual footage of it. However, I do have a picture for it. So I'm going to show that picture right now. So here it is. This is the biggest bass I've ever caught by far. Easily a double digit fist. This thing is as big as my forearm. I literally shove my fit my arm down in its mouth if I wanted to with a full fist. I'd still have room to go. And my seven powered heavy duty or a medium heavy pole was completely bent over pulling this thing out of the water. So I know I know weight and from all the weight training that I do, this thing was easily a double digit. So I'm saying between a 10 to 13 max is what I'm saying. I'm, and that's, I'm, I think it's closer to 10, but it's between 10 to 13 max. So here's a picture of that fish right here. Now that was that that was awesome for me. That was absolutely awesome for me because uh, my daughter and I had been fishing for several hours prior, and it was it's pretty much dead. Where we what we do we bank fish, right? I don't have a boat or anything like that, so we bank fish. So we walk around the boat, you know, the banks, and we look for little spots that look like it'd be a good bass spot. And then I go fishing. Now, there's a channel that I follow called Tactical Bassin. <laughs> go figure. It's not tactical. I'm tactical. It's tactical. It's Tactical Bassin. I teach you how to catch bass. And I've been following them a lot. I've been doing a lot of research into them. And, they're, and I've learned a lot about bass, stuff that I didn't even know. And I've been fishing for my whole life. Uh, I learned a lot of stuff about bass that I didn't even know. And I took everything that I learned in the video and I was applying it to all my fishing. But this day, it was getting kind of dead, all right? It was getting kind of dead. There wasn't much going on. There was, you know, I'd get a couple hits every now and then. I had a topwater frog, got a little bit of a hit and stuff like that. But I didn't set the hook in time and it died down. So my daughter and I were just walking around the bank doing our thing. And I came across the back. Now, keep in mind, bass are cold weather fish, okay? I learned this from Tactical Bass. And bass are, you have to consider them a cold water fish, okay? You have to consider them a cold water fish. They like the colder water. They like the cooler water. So a lot of people know that. For me, I've always considered, oh, it's bass and warm water fish. You see it out here on pike or uh, musky is a cold water fish. No, they're all cold water fish. They prefer the cold water. So what people teach for years and years is what you do is if you want to catch bass in the summer, you go morning fishing or nighttime fishing and you fish the top water. If you're going to go during the day, you got to punch down deep and try to get them, whether it's a Texas rig worm or something like that in order to catch a fish. Now, one thing that I've, I've learned is I, I, I had I, I have jigs, I've used jigs over the year, but I didn't have a whole lot of confidence in jigs because growing up, I never really caught anything on jigs. Me, I'm more of a river fisher, fisherman, and I like to use shiny stuff, and I catch a lot of pike through that, or I catch my bass, large mouth, small mouth, through like spinner baits and stuff like that. 
So for me, a jig's kind of iffy. I'm like, okay, yeah, I understand it, but if I want to hunt something, I'm going to go Texas rig and try to set up a worm and, and actually try to get down there. But anyway, so this time, I, I took everything that I was learning from Tactical Bass, and, and we were walking around the bank, and I came to the back corner of the actual lake that we go fishing. I noticed there's a big, heavy tree that had partially fallen, and it was kind of hanging out in the water. It was a nice, shady area, and then the sun was on the shady area. Weedy as all hell. I mean, there's grass all over the place. It's a very grassy lake that we go to. So I was, just, I was just looking at it and I was thinking about what tactical, tactical bass I was teaching. I'm like, all right, I need to get a black and blue jig out, is what I was saying. A black and blue jig. So this is a Strike King black and blue jig. This is actually the exact jig I did. It's <laughs> seen better days. This is the actual jig that I actually caught with a fish. Hold on. Let me pull it up here for you. Got a little weed left on it that I missed. Right there. This is a black and blue jig with a pumpkin trailer this is like a pumpkin grub trailer all right so here it is that's the jig this is a strike king jig it's a nice punching head you get good solid head you can tell do a lot of punching with it but uh it, 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 this one is designed with this little hook right here it makes it partially weedless not fully weedless but it's more weedless than a lot of other stuff and what you do is you punch it down and like the fluffiness of the, the actual skirt on it what happens is if it bumps into something on the ground i learned from tactile bass and it explodes out a little bit and a lot of times bass will kind of look at something and investigate it and they'll take a look at it and when that explodes like that it just automatically triggers them and the bass go for it because it looks like some moving part so it's just a trigger factor so that is it's black and blue jig right here i have these little pumpkin trailers these are actually uh zoom all right zoom that's all i can find these are zoom they're grubs all right these are like grubs they're felt albert grub pumpkin all right so this is what i was using for the trailer so i just the way i set up a jig most people know this is you simply take the trailer this one's seen better days pop it up on this wrap around the hook all right bring it all the way around then if you see there's this little a lot of jigs have this little piece up there you just put that guy on there and you kind of pinch it up over the top of it and just like that now this jigs this trailer has definitely seen better bag so i see right there that's the uh setup i had right there so i have the black and blue jig with this pumpkin kind of trailer so this just turned into a swim jig so it's there's a craw jig or it's like a punching jig you put like a like a crawfish or like a beaver they call it a beaver um kind of bait on it whereas this you put a tail on it it turns it into a swig jig so you have this thing it's going in the water it's bouncing on things it's bouncing on things and then what happens is it slams into things and it puffs up and if fish are looking at it, it hits it but anyway i saw the spot so i threw my jig on just like this i'm like okay i'm gonna go jig i know uh, I, I, I don't have much confidence in them because i never really caught much fish on it but i'm like okay i'm gonna try out a black and blue jig like they said black and blue for some reason they were saying they don't know what it is but black and blue jig usually catches bigger fish a lot of jigs will catch stuff but black and blues always get the big fish so i'm like all right i'm gonna put a black and blue jig on just like this i turned it into a swim bait hooked it up to my 30 pound uh, test it's actually 30 pound test braided line on my seven powered medium heavy pole because it's kind of more of a pull it through the weeds you should get stuck in the weeds you kind of jerk it through the waves now the way how you use a jig is you push it in there and you let it kind of fall, fall, fall down to the bottom it's it, it, all jigs have a weighted head they have different shapes i like this type of head they have a weighted head and you still see my braid on it what happens is it goes down and it just kind of floats down to the bottom and i let it sit there for a second and then i do a couple things is one i either pull it up and reel it in a little bit pull it up reel it in a little bit that's taking a little bit of slack out of it i pull it up or i'll do the double tap the double tap we'll call that the double tap that's what they say tactical assassin they tell a double hop because crawfish do a double hop they come up and they do it so i'll do a double hop sometime and then i'll do like variations so i'll do a, a bounce and a pull through and a double hop or a pull through depending on uh, the bottom whether it's grassy or rock or whatever sometimes you gotta pull it through so I sit there, the first cast, I just I set up the jig, I cast it out there, and my daughter's sitting there next to me, and she asked me a question. I'm like, okay, whatever. So I, you know, I cast it out there, and it's in the water. Now that I have it, I'm just kind of jigging it. I just feel it. You're feeling the bottom as you go. I see it bouncing on stuff. So I'm answering my I question my daughter. I wasn't 100% paying attention to the jig. I just pulled it up, and I was kind of letting it go through. Now, when, when a fish hits a jig, uh, when a fish hits a jig, when they usually hit it, what happens is they hit it, on when it's actually descending, all right, when it's actually descending. So you pull it up, shh, then it descends. You pull it up, you're taking out the slack and it descends a little bit. And the fish will hit it on the descent. Now every time when you're jigging, you can feel the weeds, you can feel the grass. So what I do is every single time I feel a little pull, I kind of pull it a little harder than I normally did just to kind of rip it through the grass just to make sure it's not grassy. But at the same time while I'm doing that, you could possibly set the hook. So I kind of do it enough so you can set the hook, but it's just pulling it out of the grass a little bit, kind of ripping it through the grass. So I had this thing bouncing on the ground and I, my daughter asked me a question and I just look at it and I'm like, oh, 
I, I don't remember what the question was, I was just answering it. And all of a sudden, I have a kind of a cheaper reel or whatever. And then I felt like a little tug like I normally do. So I just kind of pulled it like normally. And then I, my, my reel made like a popping noise. I'm like, okay, that didn't sound good. And I just like, okay, that's weird. And then I felt it. I'm like, okay, that's a little bit of weight. So I started to pull it. And all of a sudden, my drags are always set tight. Drag makes it tighter or looser. My drag's always set tight, so I cannot pull it out there. I do a lot of pike fishing. And I'm just like, okay, whatever. My drag went off and I lost about 10, maybe 15 feet of line. I was like, I had to like crank my drag down and I'm sitting there pulling it in. My reel did another one of those pop things again, which is kind of off, catch me off guard. I heard a pop. I'm like, oh crap, what was that? And I felt it. I'm like, holy, holy, holy. Shit. It was like the thing fought harder than a northern pike. All right. It fought harder than the northern pikes that I brought in. I'm like, holy crap, I'm sitting there. And I have this seven power media. Uh, poles are judged in power. Seven is pretty heavy duty pole. All right. This is a pretty heavy duty pole you can pull some big fish on a seven powered rod and a medium heavy is it has it's kind of stiff action so it's easier to like rip it through the weeds and stuff like that's not the most sensitive pole but stiff that you could rip it through stuff i was sitting there and my and my pole was literally bending over completely bending over i'm like holy shit i'm like the, my first thought was like this has got to be a carp on a jig which was weird but this has got to be a carp because there's some massive carp in this lake like, cause it was just, it was just too big. And I'm bringing it in. I'm like, holy shit, this is a monster. Now my daughter and I, we like to watch uh, River Monsters just because it's a fun show. <laughs> and my 11 year old comes running over to me. I got you, daddy. And she walks up behind me and grabs my waist. <laughs> you know, like, 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 like the things that pull me in the water. It's not going to pull me in the water. I'm just like, oh my God, I'm fighting with it. And I'm like, back up because my arm was in the way and she's going to block my arm. She's like, okay. So <laughs> she walks over there. I'm sitting there trying to bring it in and I give her my phone. I'm like, quick. And I still got it on the line. I'm like, give her a phone. I put it on video. I'm like, here here video, video tape this and i start pulling it in my daughter turns it on but it's on the ground she's like oh i want to try i want to try and then she brings it up and then she hits the button like it's camera that is what it looks like she hit the button like she's trying to take a photo because i usually ever take photos and she actually stopped the video of it and then i'm like is it recording she's like yeah i'm sitting there trying to get it in i'm like oh I'm like, well make sure it's recording push the button make sure it's recording so she pushes the button I get it to the shore and I bend over and she gets my butt in the frame, all right? And I don't want to show that camera to you guys. She gets my butt while I'm bending over into the frame to pull the thing out of the water. And then it lasts like maybe a two second video and you see the fish a little bit in the water. And then it pulls up and then I'm like, I pull, I pick this fish up and when I pull a big fish out, I pull it outwards because if you pull it up, it could actually break off the line. So I pull it outwards like that. And then I had to bring it up just a little bit to get to it. And my seven power pole was completely bent over. And that thing was heavy. I mean, minimum 10 pounds. I even picked it up and when I was trying, I thought my daughter was recording, I'm like, this has got to be at least 10 pounds, minimum of 10 pounds, 10 to 13. I was just picking this thing up. And the thought occurred to me, this fish was so massive. Like its belly was huge. It was it's huge, huge belly. I couldn't even fit my hand around. I'm 6'1", all right? And I'm at 250 pounds. I could not fit my hand around this fish's belly. So I'm sitting there trying to pull it out of the water and the thought occurred to me, I'm like, all right, this fish is so heavy. If I grab its mouth, am I gonna break this fish's jaw? As, as a thought to her to it. So I just kind of picked it up with both the hands. I pulled out my jig and I'm just holding up for the camera. I'm like, holy crap. And I like looked down in the mouth and I would literally, the mouth is so massive. I felt like I could literally put, if I were to put my fist, it would probably go in about that far into the fish's mouth before it actually got to its belly area. And it, it, there'd still be room around it. That, I mean, that's just how big this massive, this bass was for me. Biggest fish, the biggest bass I've ever caught in my life. And I was sitting there just taking a picture. I'm like, hold on. I'm like, oh my God, my daughter just click, 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 taking pictures, taking pictures. So her pictures weren't the best. So I threw it through Photoshop and kind of zoom it in and stuff like that to get the pictures. But once again, here's the picture of this. Now this is a picture. Look at that fit, the belly of that fish. So this is the best picture to actually show the belly of the fish. So we'll take a look at that real quick. This fish, by far, my personal best bass I've ever caught a day. The biggest personal best bass I've ever caught. Ever, ever, ever caught. Now, I was doing this with my daughter wanted to get into, so I fit, hooked her up, pulled, her hooked her pull up with a jig. I was teaching her how to fish it and stuff like that, too. And then we're out there. I still had this guy on there. 
I still had this guy on there. And like I said, this day was pretty much dead until I pulled that monster out of the water. And we're sitting there and I see another little like jump, a little bit of a surface jump, not a full jump, but like a little surface and a little wake. So I just randomly cast this out there again. I said, oh, I get whatever, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's carp, maybe it's not. And within like two jig, boom, I get hits, it hits again. And it's a, it's, 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 a, it's average size bass, what I catch. Average size bass is maybe a one to two pounder is what I usually catch. Maybe three on um, tops. You know, most of it is usually that two pounder bass is what I catch. And I'm picking it up and I'm bringing it out there. And like I said, once again, I hit another largemouth bass literally within 10 minutes of catching that monster. And it was just, I mean, it was just a great day for me out there, for me out there. My daughter, I wanted her to catch so bad too. So I had to swap her out and I was teaching her how to do the jig. And then that part kind of got dead. That area got a little bit dead. But anyway, I'll show that video real quick of that other bass that I caught. So this is shortly after that. My actually daughter actually kind of caught this one on video. It's a little dark, but she's a camera. <laughs> she's not She's not a professional camera person. So here's the video that she caught of my little bass. Here we go. Got another uh, large mouth over here. It's much more smaller. This is a nice spot. This is a nice spot. What do you think, Abby? You like the spot? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. The other one tasted better, huh? Uh -huh. All I'm using is a jig. Good to go. Now I was bummed because I had never catched a kissed a bass before a day in my life, and I kept I kissed the big bass, thinking my daughter got it on camera, but it didn't work. So I kissed this bass, just to be sure. But I still think this one didn't taste as bad, taste as good as the big one, because the big one was just awesome when it came to the kiss. But no, anyway, but anyway, so after that, my daughter and I just you know continued on. That spot kind of got dead. Went down the road, and she almost caught a decent perch. Uh, Look in the water, a decent yellow perch. She almost pulled one in, and once again, she was using a jig. So. For all the people out there that love bass fishing, look for shadowy areas, especially in the summer. Look for shady areas with hanging stuff on that. And I don't know what it is, but that tactical bass was right. You know, I'll leave a link to their page down down below because I, 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 I've learned so much from these guys, so go check them out. They're down below. Um, you'll see it by my Patreon page. My Patreon, that's for the people that love this content. If you want to help support this channel, go for it. But the actual page for their... For their actual channel is down there so tactical bass and good guys to follow if you're really into bass fishing and stuff like that too but it's amazing how you know a, a fish a lure that i never had confidence in uh, i never had confidence that never caught a fish onto it until i was watching these guys and i take it out and i catch the biggest bass i've ever caught in my life um i've caught the biggest bass i've ever caught in my life and hopefully more to come and after that right afterwards i caught another one of these Great dudes to follow go check them out they can really help you out when it comes to bass fishing and right here they said this is a strike king jig this is Strike King. You find them at Walmart for crying out loud. Bass Pro, wherever you go. Strike King jig, so it's got kind of a kind of a narrower head on it, so it kind of goes down, punches good. And like I said, the, the, the trailers I was using was right here. Now, different colors work for different lakes, but for some reason, this combination right here works very well for mine. So, but anyway, guys, I hope you liked this video. I had fun telling the video because, man, this story, this was a fun fish. It was a fun, fun fish. I wish I could be fishing right now. But like I said, my, my wife's out in Texas right now, so it's not working too well. But anyway, guys, if you like this video, like, share, subscribe. Tell your friends about me. And remember, it's our responsibility to take care of each other and protect each other. Peace.